In an unexpected turn of circumstances that sent shock waves across the country, King Charles, the newly crowned monarch, appeared with an unyielding determination to exercise his authority. This was a shocking transformation of events. King Charles was resolved to carefully replace the hole that was left by the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Harry and Meghan, who had previously severed their links with the monarchy. This meant that they had given up their royal duties, patronages, and privileges. However, before we proceed, please ensure that you have subscribed to the channel and that the notification bell is turned on. In the early morning hours of February, when the sun was shining brightly with its golden beams onto Buckingham Palace, the atmosphere was filled with a vibrant sense of expectancy. The momentous pronouncement, which had the potential to irrevocably alter the fundamental foundation of the royal environment, was drawing near. Because of the weight of history that was hanging in the air, the British public held their breath collectively the entire time. Journalists were frantically scribbling notes, cameras were clicking in a frenetic symphony, and people from all over the world were squeezing in close to hear the words that would determine the course of the future. There was a palpable sense of expectation that echoed throughout the luxurious corridors of Buckingham Palace. In order to disclose his choice, King Charles took the initiative to do so while maintaining an unwaveringly royal bearing. It was a moment that would change the way the monarchy would proceed in the future. In the future, Harry and Meghan will no longer be able to wear the prestigious Sussex titles, which were previously synonymous with power and status. As an alternative, they would search for a new custodian, one whose rise to power would astonish and enchant the entire nation. This guardian was none other than Lady Louise Windsor, the modest niece who had quietly developed into a shining example of grace and duty over the course of her life. The decision that was made was not made on a whim or in a hurry. The result was the outcome of careful planning, conversation in hushed tones, and shadowy corners. The nights were spent poring over ancient parchments that contained the kingdom's most hidden information. In his capacity as a perceptive observer of character, King Charles had a profound admiration for loyalty, namely the kind of loyalty that thrives in anonymity, remains unyielding and unflinching, and does not seek the spotlight. After celebrating her 21st birthday only a few short months earlier, Lady Louise had demonstrated that she was a firm pillar of support for the crown. She had weathered stormy storms and embraced calm days with equal determination. The fact that her dedication was inscribed into the very stones of Windsor Castle is a monument to the strength of her passion that never wavered. The essence of monarchy was exemplified by Lady Louise, who exuded an air of calm and expertise that belied her tender years. Whether she was riding in the annual Trooping the Color Parade or gently introducing plaques at charity events, she carried out her responsibilities with the same level of accuracy and grace. Even the Queen herself, who is known to be a woman of few words, was believed to have muttered to King Charles, she's a chip off the old block. The affection that Lady Louise had for horses was reminiscent of the affection that her grandparents, Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip, had for horses. The stables at Sandringham were familiar with her because she would gently brush their manies, speak secrets into their ears, and ride bareback through meadows that were caressed by dew. In astonishment, some in the equestrian community who were enthralled by her energy whispered, she possesses the Windsor spirit. As the gloomy day approached, which was mired in sadness for the demise of Prince Philip, Lady Louise became a pillar of support for her parents, Prince Edward and Sophie, who were in a state of mourning. Her unassuming presence was a soothing balm for their pain, and it offered them unwavering support and consolation. The resiliency that ran through her veins was recognized by King Charles, who nodded his head in approval as he observed this. The Sussex titles, which had previously been harmed by storms of tabloid headlines, tell-all interviews, and transatlantic flights, would now find restoration in the capable hands of Lady Louise. King Charles made a solemn pledge to restore their soiled dignity while maintaining a steely stare that conveyed determination. Due to the fact that he considered that Harry and Meghan's activities had caused damage to the monarchy's reputation, he believed that Lady Louise, with her presence that was both quiet and powerful, would repair those breaches and make the royal legacy more vibrant. Therefore, the stage was prepared. 
When Prince Harry stood before Lady Louise, a symbol of tradition, the monarchy, and the unwritten pact that united generations, he did so with the weight of history resting upon his shoulders. He bowed with a profound sense of reverence, not as a sign of defeat but rather as a way of paying homage to the family tree that had influenced him. Lady Louise acknowledged him with a nod of understanding, her steely blue eyes remaining unmoved throughout the exchange. The titles of Sussex were now hers to carry forward into the future. In addition, Harry embraced this new order with dignity and modesty, acknowledging that fate had mapped out a different path for him to follow. While this was going on, the British populace, which is always vigilant and extremely sensitive to the inner workings of the monarchy, whispered in hushed tones. There was a shift in the very underpinnings of the institution, and Lady Louise Windsor, the silent force that had emerged from the shadows, was now the subject of attention and praise. Their legacy was rewritten by a king who had the audacity to redefine the fate of the monarchy, and as for Harry and Meghan, they gently vanished into the annals of history. His unshakable faith in the strength of loyalty and the possibility of regeneration served as his compass. 